Please tell us about what happened one time at the airport with you, Brian Christopher, and I can't remember who was the other guy. Jack Evans. I bet test. Is yes, this sir. a soccer ball? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, yeah. Sir. Yes, sir. Of course you would ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am your co-host, TMD, and we would like to thank our sponsor for the evening. That's going to be Knox Pro Entertainment. Knox Pro, located out of Van Nuys, California. You want to train with the best? You want to learn from the best? Well, all you got to do is log on with the best. Go to the World Wide Web at www.knoxpro.com. Big Kish, how are you doing tonight? Man, oh man. What a special episode tonight, my man. Man. What, what is what is it, episode, what, 30? Yeah. Yes, sir. This is episode 30. Ooh. And uh, you take the number three. We're talking yeah. too cool, baby cakes. Too cool. We're talking about Rikishi Fought 2, Grandmaster Sexy. Oh, Lord. And buckle Scotty up. Too Hotty. Buckle up. Buckle up. Yes, sir. We're going to yeah. jump straight into a big key. So, uh, whose idea was it to uh, form Too Cool? Man, I, hell, I don't know. It was probably some drunk ass writer in the back scene and <laughs> just seeing this big Samoan blonde hair walking around with a big thong on. And then put uh, these two cats, white boys, who think they know how to do hip hop, and we kind of just stumbled onto it, you know, in the back scene. You know, uh, it was back in the day. Remember, they had I think it was Sunday Night Heat. Yes, sir. They had that before Monday Night Raw goes live, and we were the one. That's where they put all the new acts to come through first. And man, we went out there and uh, you know uh, just did what we did. Threw some moves together. We had no no prep or anything, Joey. And we went out there, dude, and, you know, in this business, when when the fans like it, they're going to let you know. If they don't like it, they're going to let you know. Man, when we went out there, we heard the cheers and everything. We knew we was on to something. What was your first impression of uh, Grandmaster Sex, a second-generation wrestler, Brian, uh, Jerry Lawler's son? Man, I used to want to beat his ass, man. <laughs> Why? Because Why? he was just arrogant. He was just really? Arrogant. If you didn't know him, boy... You'd want to whoop his ass, man. But, dude, he was, when I finally, you know, traveled with him and, you know, he took some time with Rocky for a little bit in Memphis and he was real close with Rock before before I came through. But when I came through and we started traveling together, you know, I, I actually liked this crazy fool, man. You know, because I just liked that he was tough. You know, he didn't back down from nobody. You know what I mean? In the industry. And I, I knew, you know, that just from experience, like, I just was partying with this guy all night. And then here we are coming into the ring, and he just had so much energy. <laughs> like, you know, going to the gym, come out like he ain't slept all night. You know what I mean? Like he slept all night, right? But that showed me the passion that this guy had, man. Mm -hmm. You know, he comes from a you know generation with his father, Jerry the King. So right, right. he's been around the business all his life. At right. 15 years old, he's been working but yeah we we i grew to love him man he was uh one of my old g's and so forth and we just we pretty much traveled the whole world together and just had fun together what was your first impression of scotty too hotty well, scotty was laid back uh he wasn't uh he wasn't as wild as uh as uh grand master you know scotty's kind of a loner he loved uh he loved them damn amusement parks <laughs> Yeah, go figure. Grandmaster <laughs> like go to the club. Like they go to the yeah, yeah, yeah. Grandmaster goes to the clubs. Yeah. And he goes uh, to Scotty Disneyland. Go, he goes to Disneyland yeah. because he loves roller coasters. Cool, man. Yeah. Until this day, man, he's still out there doing roller coasters. Nice, so nice. it was two different, but uh, you know, two different uh vibes. But uh when we came together in the ring, man, you know, we knew we all had some uh, magic, you know. And uh I can tell you this, you know, we was all on one page. When we went out there, everybody knew the role, you know, as long as you get that worm in there and back that thing up and, you know, do the Michael Jackson and bust the move and bring the gargles, uh, the rest was history. It was such an easy time in all our careers uh, because we were all, they've been doing that for a minute there mm -hmm. uh, before I came back, you know, and uh, when I came back, there's a whole new different character and, and uh, you know, they were kind of just in that mediocre spot. But once we teamed up, uh, we we became a special attraction, and so, uh, sh the rest was history. Yes, sir. And what really worked with that was because you're a badass. Like you weren't yeah. funny. You weren't funny at this time yet, and you never went comment. Like you never went ha ha. You were serious the whole time, which made it funny. Which yeah. if anyone gets into acting, they're gonna tell you what makes it funny is if you play it serious. What made it work 
was you had these two goofy white boys, yeah. and you had this no nonsense taking Samoan guy, and uh, man. When when they would do their foolishness dancing and you had enough of it because you already got the one two three you had enough you're walking out to the ring they go no 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 we want you to come join us yeah. and then you walk to them like what and then they take out the glasses those magic iconic, yellow shades those iconic yellow glasses if you look at the podcast logo they're in there those iconic yellow glasses. And then they put them on you, and then all of a sudden you just magically change into this dancing. Uh, uh, An actor. Yes, sir. Uh, right. How, did, how right. did that whole concept come to be? And it, was that something you came up with? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, you, you know, when you're on house shows, yes, sir. You know, and you work in a new character, you kind of find what fits. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of stumbled onto that because you know, I, I didn't want to show the people the the happy-go-lucky side of me mm -hmm. until, in my mind, why would I celebrate if we didn't win? And so I wanted to, boom, hit the one, two, three, however way we get it, and then, okay, job is done, let's go. But the only way, there had to be something to bring me back. And with the, you know, with the glasses, we kind of stumbled on because they were already wearing the glasses too cool, or Brian. The goggles, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ron, one had the yellow one. glasses, mm -hmm. the other one had the gargles. Mm -hmm. And so we stumbled on it. I said, yo, man, put put the glasses on me. And so when they put the glasses on me, that's when I threw my hands up. It's like, oh, Kishi's turned into magic now. And then you do what people didn't expect you to do at 450 pounds. Start breaking. This dancing. guy here just, you know, just went into, you know, just uh, disco mode. So you wrote that. Yeah. Yeah. So I came over and then, I, you know, I had a, I had a part to do with, you know, maybe we can turn the whole arena into like a disco ball vibe. You know, and then maybe throw some pyro or something just to, like, I wanted to turn it into, we wanted to have like some type of uh, special, a special entertaining vibe to celebrate the win. Everybody always wins what the referee comes, raise your hand, ding, ding, gives you your belt, whatever, and then your music and you're walking out. But how come we couldn't change it? Let's try this. And when we tried that, man, we was closing up shows every night, you know. Such an iconic moment. Yeah. Um, and the crowd ate it up. I was one of those people watching from home in Union City, California in the 90s. Mm. Um, that was one of the most exciting parts of Monday Night Raw was watching Too Cool. Um, what would you say would... Uh, when you were in Too Cool, who was your what was your favorite match while you were in Too Cool? Man, dude, we had a lot. Because you had that that six man tag on Monday Night Raw, I believe, against DX, wasn't it? Uh, and then the no, Rock. yeah, it was five of us. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was uh, us three and the Rock and Mick Foley. There it is. There. It is. Yeah. Um. But if you're saying just Too Cool and Rikishi, man, uh, we had a lot of good matches. Uh, on TV and and were married on a house show with Kurt Angle, Christian, and Edge. Mm -hmm. uh, th those were like a night off because you know, <laughs> it was so funny. You know, <laughs> it was so fun. You know, wow. you know Kurt Angle's, you know how how he works and how he was very uh, a lot of uh, he was a charismatic entertaining. guy, and entertaining, right? You know, who comes out drinking milk? <laughs> 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 All right, then you, you got Edge and Christian, who were great, great workers. Yeah. You know, just night off every night with those cats. So, you know, we had we had a, a a lot of good matches with those cats. And then, uh, you know, um, sometimes uh, I think it was the Hardy Boys. Uh, we would have a few, and that and that was I forget who they would team up the Hardys with, mm -hmm. uh, but they would put somebody to have a six man with us. And uh, you know, the, the Hardys were a fit with too cool. It, it, I, did, I really didn't fit into that six man when they teamed the Hardys are, because we all know the reputation of the Hardys. You know, if you don't give the people what the Hardys does, and that's extreme wrestling, right? Then it kind of like ah, it's not working, you know. But you know, we were always like I don't know, maybe a third match, a fourth match before intermissions and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and they would put us in there to, you know, sometimes first match just to open up to show hot. Yeah. And before you know it, man, you know, months later, you know, we weren't even advertised as main event and they would close us, have us close up the show at main event because nobody could really follow that closing. You know, once the dance, but big, you know, man, the crew bust the move. Yep. 
you know, with that legendary song, that yep. beat that kind of look fly today, it, it's over with, you know? So, and by the way, man, I, you know, in case y'all didn't know, I just posted that. Yes, you on, did. Uh, you did your little remix on that. I had to, you know. And, and the come crew, on now, the crew with Frankie and they they, come on they kept talking to me like, "Man, you this is legendary, man. We we got to make something off of this." And so I was very happy how it came out, man. Uh, big shout out to Jay Supreme, mm -hmm. you know, who uh, uh, runs the beat there and put the beats together and so forth. And you know, I was happy to, I was happy to do it. It was a good vibe. It was in all my minds to do it, but, you know, why not? It made sense for Such me. Such a fun song. Yeah. And, uh, you know, got good vibes from a lot of the fans and so forth. Yep, so, yep. you know, y'all go ahead and just bump that on your family barbecue yes, or reunion. Sir. Yes, sir. Bump it on your local radio station and tell them Big Key set you. Let's uh, let's talk about uh, Grandmaster Sex A for a few minutes here. Because, uh, of course, his anniversary of his passing just passed. Mm. And he was such a, 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 a character, man. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because whenever I would see him around you, it was kind of like you had that little brother, that, that, that little brother you had to always keep your eye on. Yeah. Um, I remember a story you had told me about, and I want, I wanted to see if you want to talk about it here today. Uh, was at the airport because, um, I, I saw a few different sides to Brian because yeah. I dealt with Brian myself and I, I had a story too for you here in a second. Uh, but, uh, he had a good side and he had a bad side, yeah. uh, like, like all of us, but, uh. Please tell us about what happened one time at the airport with you, Brian Christopher, and I can't remember who was the other guy. Jack Evans. I've been test. Is yes, this sir. a soccer ball? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Of course you would ask me. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Joe, we were just talking about this up in the Bay Area. Yep. Uh, I think we were on our way to do the pay-per-view party some stuff. Anyhow, so back in the day, uh, this was uh, when uh, me and Frito, we ran NWA, New Wrestling uh evolution so we branded this company and we were out there for 10 years so we would bring in a lot of talent that weren't signed with wwe bring them there and also talent from mexico city and 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 also in canada so this one kid we booked him from canada and his name was jack evans so jack evans uh man you know this is a week tour and the first day you know brian is notorious for messing with new people and so the first day comes as our first show. So this kid's entrance, and we never, you know, I've never seen his entrance, or, so we're doing a walkthrough. And this kid comes down the, he comes down the ramp, Joey, and he's, uh, he's doing a handstand on a skateboard. And he handstand with the skateboard all the way down. Soon as he land right by the, the ring, bounced up and jumped on top of the apron into the ring, which was very, very impressive. Jesus, I'm blown up. Very, very impressive. I said, okay, mm -hmm. you know. And so we're sitting there, and, John, and uh, of course, Brian goes, what if he were to bust his ass coming down there? How do you do that then? I said, man, just leave him alone. He, he, obviously, he knows how to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And he, he gives you that laugh like, <laughs> <laughs> so when he laughs like that, I know something's, something's plotting, coming, yeah. <laughs> plotting in his head. So here he goes again. This poor kid goes. It's time for him to, you know, the show start. He's getting ready to do his entrance. I just seen his entrance. Boom, he comes down. And this music kid doing a handstand on the skateboard comes. As he comes down the ramp, all of a sudden the skateboard stops, skids, like, and the kid fell off of the thing. So he fell off into a forward row, continued to jump up. But so what happened was, I didn't know what happened. Like, why did the that happen there? And now, of course, I look over to the right, and I see Brian <laughs> laughing. So Brian's laughing. He stuck a little bolt in between that ramp where the kid just so happened to come down there. <laughs> Skid off of that, almost fell. Yeah. Luck, lucky the kid, he was like a gymnasium guy. So he knew how to tuck and roll into, uh -huh. boom. So anyhow, that happens. That's that's the beginning of the tour. Uh -huh. So I jump all over Brian. I said, man, you, you know, you're an <laughs> to do that to that kid, man. Just sleep alone, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it's funny, it's funny, you need to break him in. Okay, so that goes. A week goes by. Now I see, okay, this kid here loves soccer. <laughs> so the fifth day, uh, the fifth booking, we went to a, some type of soccer game, and this kid got, I guess he knew the player, 
and the player gifted him with a soccer ball, real from the game. That's like that's like having a Super Bowl ball given to you. Right. Obviously means something to the kid. Right. So we'd go and and you know you see the kid now he's so happy man and he's just you know kicking the ball and he's a good like he does good soccer he can kick the ball and sideways. So anyhow, show's done. Now we're headed to the airport five in the morning. It is five in the morning. We're waiting for our flight at eight a.m. But the airport is not open yet. This is Rome in Italy. So we get there. The bus drops us off. We can't stay in the bus because the promoter had time limit on. So now we're all outside Joe, with our bags. So this kid here, he's got his ball. Feels like kill some time. He's just kicking. And, of course, Brian is complaining about why the hell are we here, blah, blah, blah. We could have went to the, you know, to the club and had a free drink, whatever. So he's not in the greatest mood. So the kids over there have him minding his own business, kicking the ball sideways like you know, like Pele, you know, <laughs> kicking the ball. And Ryan just, you know, you see Brian just looking at him, looking at. Him. Brian gets up, walks over, grabs the ball, and looks at the ball, and he booted that ball like a field goal attempt. It went right on top of the Rome uh, International Airport. <laughs> So now the kid, that you know, that meant something. The kid was like he was almost like almost crying about his soccer ball, you know. And of course, Tess, bless his heart, Ted came over. Ryan, Ryan, you're an <laughs> oh man, you know, had to. So now you know, Ryan, kick that ball all over the place, blah blah blah. <laughs> so Tess talks Ryan in, and I talk Ryan in. Dude, go get the kid's ball, man. Go get the kid. So now he had to climb up. Now. You got to get up, but this wall, right? Well, uh, how can how can he get up on the wall? And of course, Tess was the tallest, him and Matt Morgan. <laughs> so had Brian's ass stand on Tess's shoulder. Tess benched Brian up, which made him hang off the clip, and he got up. <laughs> so he gets up. Oh. So he gets up now. Now he's got up there and he got the ball. Soon as he got the ball and he drops the ball, throws it back down to the kids. Here's your <laughs> ball. <laughs> Shut the f up now. <laughs> so he gets the ball. Jack Evans grabbed the ball. And now, before Brian's trying to get back in, he's like, great, how the hell am I going to get back down? I was like, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so he goes like he's trying to come off the edge of it. And all of nowhere, here come lights. It's the freaking Rome policeman of the, uh, of oh the airport. And I'm looking. You better lay your ass down. <laughs> this is international. Right. Your ass is going to go to jail for a long time. I mean, I'm thinking, hey, what if they think he's putting a bomb up there? Who knows? Because they could have shut the whole airport down. So the damn thing goes, uh, I mean, the cops drive around and, you know, they finally leave. Dude, I've never seen a guy with bad knees jump down so <laughs> fast. I guarantee you that's where he really broke his knees or uh, yeah, oh, so that happened, man. dude. And funny came down and jumped off, and and that was the story of that. You know, the kid was happy. He got his ball, and it was like, and that day on, I, I don't think I've ever had them on the same tour ever again. <laughs> you know, and uh, that's the Grandmaster story. Yo, a big case. I, 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 I'm going to make this quick, too. Um, I wanted to tell you a story that I've never told you. Yeah. Um, so 2014 uh, Territory League. Brian Christopher comes to be a part of Territory League. Mm. So before he even gets there, I'm, I'm warned about him by two people. Dude, Reno, that's 20 years. Almost. 2014? 2014, yeah. 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 Uh, 10 years, 10, ten years, years, 10 years. I'm sorry, 10 years. It's, yeah. a, it's okay. Um, I'm warned by two people yeah. about Brian Christopher from Reno and yeah. David Kavika. Yeah. So Brian Christopher comes, and he wants to go out that night after the show, and he's like, he's asking, who's the person to take me out? People keep saying TMD. <laughs> so Brian, he picks me out. He uh, goes, I I hear you're the dude to take me out tonight. And I was uh, like, that's a horrible impression. But uh, yeah, he, yeah. I, I said, yeah, yeah, I'm the guy. I'll, I'll take you. I'm green at this time. So, of course, sure. I'm like, oh, WWE guy wants to take me out. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to hang out with him. Reno tells me before I go out, do not hang out with him. He is the devil. Do not hang out with him. Satan. David Kavika tells me, if you're going to hang out with Brian Christopher tonight, take me home. So th that was a sign right there. I should not hang out with Brian Christopher. 
I didn't listen. So me and Brian Christopher uh, uh, hang out. Uh, we go out to North Hollywood. We go to West Hollywood. We come back to North Hollywood. We're faded. I'm still green at this time, so I'm not used to lingo. He started talking. We we were at a strip club in North Hollywood. He was start, He was talking about gigging, and I thought he meant like playing a show. Gigging. If, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to give it away. You look yeah. it up. Gigging doesn't mean it, uh, a show. Gigging in the pro wrestling business means something else. Yeah. I got on his nerves at that point. We ended up in the back of Star Garden, and somewhere somehow. Grandmaster Sex Aid tells me, I'm going to slap the f*** out of you. And I said, because I'm not a punk I said, I wish, and before I could get my last word out, Grandmaster Sexy slapped the f*** out of me. <laughs> not once, Big Keish, not once. <laughs> twice. He followed that up with a, with a boop, yeah. boop. The second slap yeah. woke me up. Yeah. And I was ready to fight after that. Because he was talking to me about his knees. Yeah. That he had like eight surgeries. Sure. So I was going to uh, take out his legs. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, bygones became bygones. Yeah. We shook hands. And I don't know if you remember the wrestler Julius Towers, the big, big brother, man. He was so oh, big. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He lost his voice that night from separating me and Brian from fighting. We were going to fight. Uh. Brian Christopher, five minutes later, after we shook hands, got in my minivan, and he passed out. And he wouldn't wake up. I had to have him at his hotel to catch a flight in a few hours. And Chef, rest his soul, yeah. God rest his soul, Chef was uh, his handler. But but we had went out after hours, and it was like 3 in the morning. Chef was my, my go-to guy. I said, Chef, where's he staying at? He goes, he's your problem now. I don't give a <laughs> And he hung up on me. <laughs> so I had to find uh, Brian Christopher's hotel at 3 in the morning, wow. and he's passed out. I found it, carried him up the stairs, tucked him into his bed, and I'll never forget when I left, Reno telling me he's the devil. I just thought, well, I just tucked the f-ing devil into bed. So I don't know who's more crazy, me yeah. or this guy. But I will never forget uh, my times with Brian Christopher because we got to hang out a, a few times. There was Texas, too. Yeah. yeah. But um, it was such an unfortunate uh, end with uh, that guy, uh, Big Keish. And I know you and I both believe that's not what happened with him yeah. in jail, right? Yeah. Do you, you believe he... He did no, not commit I, suicide, I, right? I, I, I never in a million years. We we know I know the guy personally. You know what I mean? He never, you know. And so, again, the only thing I can think about is, you know, how Brian is. And if again, if you don't know him, you know, you you gonna want to throw hands with this guy. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you 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 you've experienced that. Yes, before. sir. Physically, and yes, so firsthand. Never. He, he had too much life to live to even go there. And, uh, you know, I hope that, you know, uh, you know, that they do the family find peace and 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 the truth of, uh, you know, of, of Brian, you know, uh, hope they find, the, you know, the uh, the true matter of what happened to to our friend, you know, so it's been a long time. You know what I mean? I mean, I still call me crazy or call me a guy that misses his friend. I still have his Instagram message that he sent me, and uh, I need I need to, I haven't never showed anybody this, Joey, and I feel like, you know, I need to show somebody this. I don't know, maybe it's closure for me or. Yeah, show. Sure. Yeah, man, I'd, we'd love to see it. So. He pulled that up within seconds, guys. That's like it, it's right there. Here's the grandmaster. Oh, sh! I'm on this now. All right. And so, what, what was that? What was that message uh, regarding? Oh, uh, big, uh, big Keish is reading. Oh, I, uh, I, I told him. I said, "Let me know if you're in town. I'll get you a table and autographs and make some, make some money." So, hit me up. And then he said, "Oh, sh-. I'm on this now." These are uh, his, his, look, his last words. What does that say? Keish. December sixteenth. 2017. There it is. I don't know, man. I just could never find the courage to delete my friends. And, you know, it's just... Yes, sir. You know, and I, I think I, I, I'll get to it. Maybe maybe I will. Maybe not. And at the end of the day, you know, I still... You know, his mom still texts me. I haven't talked to his pops in a minute. You know, his brother still hits me up. You right. Know. So, yeah, you know... I, he was a good dude, good crazy dude, man, and there'll never be nobody like the Grandmaster. How was your uh, 
title run with Scotty Too Hotty. You guys were tag champs. Yeah, I mean, it, it was an easy run. Um, it was the night I never, so peaceful for me. I never had to worry about Scotty because he's just such a straight edge dude. A good, you know, the only thing I'll probably worry about Scotty, he get hurt on roller coasters. <laughs> That's it. You know, as far as staying out late or, you know what I mean, or showing up <laughs> at a bar or whatever, that that wasn't his thing, man. He, wow. Scotty was all straight business, man. You know, Jim, you know, uh, amusement parks, and he just loved to travel and, you know, sightseeing and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was easy, man. You know, but, you know, at that time when they put me and Scotty together, man, it was kind of a, uh, it was kind of the downtime towards, uh, I want to say both of our careers, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when you come off the hottest trio mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden just put into just a tag team, it, you, you'll always see us, but you'll always know there's something missing. I was just going to ask you that. the third guy. I was just going to ask you that. Right. Did so, you guys miss? Oh yeah. Right. And even yeah. when you watch it on TV, yeah. it, it's never, you know, it's just that piece that's missing. And that's what makes the magic is uh, when you have all the pieces together, you form that magic. And that magic was what we all felt together. The magic was when we had others dance with us. They felt it. Yes, like sir. They felt like dancing with Tuku and Rikishi mm -hmm. in their act. You know, now we know what these guys feel every night. Yes, sir. I mean, the fans just, man, the fans just ate it up. You know, they... They loved it, they appreciated it, and we appreciate it. And so when it came time for uh, me and Scotty, when they uh, when we won the belts, you know, it's uh, it was another just uh, phase going through as my career personally. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, just, you know, it, it was it was great. Um, and it was uh, kind of like I already knew my time to exit yep. was coming soon. Um. So let's wrap up the two cool talk. I know you, uh, man, you got to get out of here. You got so much things yeah. going on. So big quiche. Uh, last question regarding two cool. If you could rate both their dance skills, let's rate Grandmaster Sexy yeah. on a one to a 10, his dancing skills and yeah. Scotty Tuhati on a one to a 10. What would you rate their dancing skills? Oh, well, I definitely, I just, uh, Grandmaster had some, he had some funk. He did because he came yeah. out with the Michael Jackson yeah. Come on, man. I actually ripped that off. If you go back to the Rock and Run Express intros, I ripped off yeah. Grandmaster's X. So one to ten. I I had to I had to call call uh, Grandmaster a nine. Oh yeah, because a nine. There, there were other things that you people didn't see because he would do the Michael Jackson because that was the only time he did it, man. But there were all other moves like the wobble and all this other stuff, the electric slide. He did. I mean, when he went into that two step to the left, two step to the right. You can see he dipping that he's dipping that <laughs> neck all the way down that left shoulder dips. Yes, sir. You know, so he's really getting into it. But a uh, Scotty, uh, well, uh, <laughs> you're not gonna uh, spare Scotty too high, are you? What is it? Come on. I, I don't know what uh, he said. I, the, the worm has got to be I don't know six or seven ish. Okay, maybe, maybe a six ish. Okay, okay, six ish. You know, we're gonna go. Okay, -ish, we're gonna give Scotty too hot a six ish and uh, Grandmaster Sexy a yeah. nine. Uh, oh, Scotty probably danced like Waldo, man. When you when Remember you were little rascals, <laughs> yeah, uh, alfalfa, of alfalfa, course, Waldo, Buckwheat, Waldo. yeah, of course. <laughs> When you look back on the history of professional wrestling, Too Cool was 100% one of the most funnest yeah. factions to ever exist. Yeah. Courtesy of one Dan and Samoan and two funky white boys. Um, what would be your uh, final words before we get out of here on the Too Cool experience for you, Rikishi Fatu? Oh, man, it was one of the greatest times of my life, you know, teaming up with, you know, two friends that I've learned to love in the industry, you know, has come together to... You know, to finally, when, you, when you've been searching for that ish in the wrestling business and then you form, you know, you just stumble into uh, two dudes that, you know, that's one of the greatest in the industry, in and out the squared circle, made my job fun. And to know that the family, uh, like the, the industry, the WWE universe, that really, really loved this act and loved us all, you know, it's it's a uh, it's a beautiful thing, man. I'll always remember. Uh, listen, too cool, too cool. Rikishi is legacy. That that trio, mm -hmm. 
I look for that trio one day. Hopefully, WWE is Funko able Pops. to... Funko Pops. <coughs> yeah, Funko Pop, exactly. <coughs> but I hopefully one one day that, you know, they, uh, you know, put this trio into... Uh, Hall into Hall of Fame because yeah, yeah, we were right. one of if if you're talking factions and you don't name uh, Rikishi and Tuku cool, then you wasn't in the Attitude Era mm -hmm. you was not in the Attitude Era and so yeah it's man if I had it all to do it again yeah I would uh, I'd come right back and do it with the same brothers man you know so it's good to to be able to see my friend Scotty you know doing well you know he's still out there I don't know how is he doing it. But he's still in good shape, and he's out there in the wrestling ring, you know, just enjoying time and traveling in throughout the world with his kids. And, uh, you know, you know what I'm doing, and here's what we're doing. And uh, we're just happy to be able to continue to pave it forward. All right, Big Keish. Do you have any final words for all the viewers and watchers here at the Off the uh, Top Podcast? As always, my man, it's free to be kind to one another. And always, always smarten up. Give me a yeet. Hey! <laughs>